In this video, I'm going to go over a quick demonstration uh, moving on from uh, Monday's lecture uh, on 3D graphics. And so uh, what I'll do is just kind of do a demo of creating a 3D composition. Uh, it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of start off uh, with what I did on Monday and then try creating something that actually you know looks like a real thing. Um, so as usual, I'm going to start with GitHub and I'm going to uh, fetch the repo and let's take a look in the finder. It's MMP310, so I'm gonna duplicate my uh, folder from last time. So I'm just gonna hit Command D uh, or I could do uh, copy and paste on Windows. Um, and I'm just gonna call this 3D underscore cat. So I'm gonna make a cat, uh, you know, obviously. Um, and so I'm just gonna call this folder 3D cat and then I'm going to open everything up in Sublime. Uh, and I'll add a link first. So after my 3D example here, I'm going to add a new list item and an anchor tag and call this 3D underscore cat and just call this 3D cat. Um, so just to be clear for your homework, you only have to do one project. You don't have to do two. I'm going to have two links because I have the example and then um, the demo. Uh, so just, you know, uh, just do one of these. So you can start in the same place. Like I would use my 3D example code as a starting point, um, but then you'll want to first come up with an idea for your composition. Um, so it could be a character. You could do, you know, a cat or a dog or a bird or um, a person or a cartoon character that you like or something like that. Um, you could also do like an object. You could do like some shoes. Uh, you could do a car. Uh, you could do a boat. Uh, you could do a tree, whatever you're inspired to do or interested in working on. Um, that's what you should try to create. Uh, and so I'm just going to kind of talk through the process a little bit. It is kind of hard to start designing in 3D. Um, so the, these compositions will probably be very simple, but um, with the combination of lighting and materials and stuff like that, you can get some kind of interesting effects. So um, I'm just going to uh, close this and I'm going to go ahead and start the Sublime server. Uh, and so when I go to my localhost 8080, there's MMP310. Uh, I'm going to go to 3D Cat. Uh, and this is the scene where I left off last time, um, where I just have some scene controls to rotate so I can see all the geometry. Um, and I have a little interactive lighting so I can kind of see what's happening in the scene a bit. Um, and then I just have some shapes. So I'm going to try to turn these shapes uh, into a real composition. Um, so I'm going to get started with that. I want to open up the console just so I have that ready in case I have some errors or something. Um, so I'm going to go to 3D Cat and uh, open up index.html, just change this title to 3D Cat. And let's go to sketch.js. Um, and I'm going to leave these uh, rotation controllers in. Uh, you know, they don't have to change, it's just to make it easier to view the scene. Um, you might not want to have this in your final product uh, if you just want to, you know, the scene to stay still. Um, but it is a nice way to allow the user to kind of move around in the scene. So I'm just going to leave those the way they are. Um, and then I'm going to, I should probably put a comment here. Rotation controls. Um, all right, so I'm going to leave everything the same up to the floor. Uh, so I want to have that floor in there just to kind of orient um, the user or the viewer in the scene. And I might change the late lighting later depending on what my scene looks like, but I'll, I'll probably leave it. So I'm going to leave the floor the way it is, but I want to take out the rest of this stuff down here and just start from scratch. So I do want to leave these rotations in so the controller will stay the same. So I'm just going to delete everything that comes after here and then just say cat here. So we'll start our cat. We can still... Uh, so we'll start our cat, we can still rotate the scene. So uh, for the cat head, I'll start with the sphere. I'll just do 100 pixels wide. Um, so that looks pretty good. We're going to have a kind of shiny cat. Uh, we can change that later if we want to. Um, and if we rotate the sphere, nothing really happens because um, you know, the sphere has the same dimensions in every direction. So if we wanted to have the cat's head be, uh, you know, maybe a little less uh, wide or a little less tall, we could use an ellipsoid instead. So I could go to the 
um, reference. Uh, didn't cover this last time, but there is a shape um, that's sort of like a sphere, except we can change the width and height, which is the ellipsoid. Uh, so we could use one of those instead. So I'll replace sphere with ellipsoid. And then let's just maybe uh, make it 50 and 50 on the X and Y. See what that looks like. Um, so that's kind of nice for a cat head. It's a little bit like a little bean, but you know we can add some stuff to it. Uh, maybe I'll make it bigger overall. So I'll make it like 200 um, and then 100 on the Y. And then on the Z, it's really skinny. It's probably like too skinny. Let's do 100 on the Z. Okay, so now we've got this like kind of weird bean to start with. Um, so that'll be the head for my cat. Actually, let's, let's bring this in a little bit. Let's say 150 here. Okay, so that's kind of a nice starting point. Just a circle. You might do it the other direction, like taller than, than wide, but I think this will be good for the cat, uh, for the head. Um, so let's just say that's the head and keep moving. Uh, so now let's make some ears. Obviously, the thing that makes a cat look like a cat is usually the ears. So let's do some ears. So when I'm designing here, I'm probably gonna wanna do push and pop like right from the beginning, um, cause that way I don't have to worry about translating around. So I'm gonna start with a push here and I'm gonna uh, just add a cone for the first ear um, and then we're gonna move it around. So I'm just gonna say cone. And so the cone, uh, if we look at the data, the reference for the cone, Basically, we have uh, the radius of the circle at the bottom of the cone, how wide it is, and then how tall the cone is. So the distance from that circle to the point. Uh, and then there's also the level of detail in the cone. Um, so let's try just a, a regular cone, uh, see what that looks like. So we can start with the radius and the height. We can ignore the detail for now. So let's say a cone, let's say if the cat's head is 100, maybe the ear will be like 20 and maybe the height will be like 50. And let's just take a look at that. Um, so we can't actually see it, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. So um, with the cone, you know, we can't see it right now because it's like in the middle of this cat's head. So if we take it out, there's our cone. Um, so we can kind of move it around to, a, to an easier position first. Another thing we could do if we don't want to have to remove the head is I could go into kind of a debug mode maybe. So I could say like stroke, is like let's say zero to fifty five zero so we'll get a green stroke and so then we can see the outsides and then if i go no fill or sorry the vertexes now we can see our shapes together um, so that might be a good way to design and then once i've got it set up i can go back to here so let's try this for now just as a way of designing some stuff so there's our, our cone. Um, so we're gonna have to translate and rotate to get this into the right place. So let's start by rotating. So we need to rotate around like this. Um, so that would be on the Z axis because the Z axis is the one that's, you know, that we're looking right at. So we're gonna rotate around the Z axis. So I'll say rotate Z and I wanna rotate basically 180 degrees. So that's half of pi, pi times 0.5, or maybe it's pi. Yeah, it's a full rotation, so that looks good. We might actually even want to rotate a bit more, but let's come back to that. So then I want to move it kind of like from the middle here. I guess it's kind of in the middle right here to like somewhere up here or this way. We'll do both eventually. So uh, let's start, I'll move it over on the X like 100. Okay, so that'll be our left ear. Uh, and then I'll move it up on the Y. So for Y to go up, we gotta go negative. And so then I'll move it up on the Y. So let's try 50. Okay, let's try 60. Okay, and 75. Okay, so that's starting to look good. Um, we might wanna rotate it a bit more. Uh, so maybe, or actually, I guess that's a technically less. Let's see if we do pi times 0 0.75. Okay, so now we're translating. So I might wanna rotate a bit more this way, so it's like pointing kind of like up like that. 
But if I try to rotate here, I'm going to get a little stuck because I'm not going to be rotating. Since I've translated from here to here, I'm going to be rotating uh, around here since the rotate is right there. Um, so I can turn off the translate real quick and reset the rotation. Um, so let's try pi times 0 0.75. Okay, that's like a little too far, I think. So let's try 0 0.8. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go with that. So now let's retry our translation. Okay, so now we're a little bit different. So let's bring back x a bit and increase y a bit and keep going like that. So basically with designing in 3D, uh, it's a little trickier because you kind of have to move stuff around a lot. Uh, let's try 140. All right, that's pretty close. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just gonna leave it for now. I could kind of move it around. Um, I'm gonna move the controls a little bit just to see that looks pretty good. I kind of want it to be bigger. So let's make the radius bigger. It's too big. Okay, so that's a good radius. I'm fine with that height. So that looks pretty good. So um, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna pop so that it doesn't affect my next ear. So let's call this the left ear. So now I could just copy this and just kind of reverse the translation. So one way I could just copy this, paste down here, and instead of, so I could just kind of reverse things. So I could multiply by a negative rotation and then X will be negative. So that's one way I can fix that uh, is just to kind of do the opposite. Y is the same because they're both moving up. Uh, but one X is going this way, one X is going this way, and one rotation is going that way, the other rotation is going that way. Um, but I wanna do this in the opposite direction just so we can see how to do the same thing in different ways. So I rotated first, which meant that I had to fix the rotation and then do the translate. What if I translate first? How does that change things? So let's try that. So I'm gonna take out this rotation. I'm gonna translate and I'm gonna to try to translate, so I'm gonna go over 40x, zero, or 140y. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that's my rotation. That's my translation before I rotate. So actually I wanna go negative on y, uh, and I wanna go a little bit farther on x. Um, and now I'm gonna to try to rotate this into place. And so then I'll try to figure that out. So it's gonna rotate from here. So actually I need to probably move this down a bit. Let's try 100. Okay, so now I think I can rotate. So if I rotate second, it's gonna change where I'm rotating from. So now I'm translating to here. And so I'm just rotating around the cone. So it's a little bit easier this way because I know where the origin is and then I can do the rotation based on that as opposed to doing the rotation and then resetting the translate. So now I'm gonna try rotating by pi, see what that looks like. Okay, and then I'm gonna go a little bit, I guess I could go farther than pi, so I'll do, I'll try 1.2 since that's like 0.2 in the other direction. Okay, and that got me pretty close, so now I'm just gonna translate a little bit farther and a bit down. Okay, too far. Okay, so that's pretty close. So you can see the two different approaches. I can translate first or rotate first. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that. So let's take a look at how it looks with our regular thing. So one of the ears is a little bit like off the head, but that's okay. Um, it's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good for now. Um, so let's do the eyes, uh, and then I think we'll be good. So we've got the ears. Let's do the eyes, and then we'll do a mouth, and then I think we'll be good after that. So um, for the ears, uh, for the ears, I'm gonna do a couple toruses so we can get the the. For the eyes, I'm gonna do a couple toruses uh, so we can kind of see the eye. Um, I'll 
So I'll start with the left eye, or we'll see if it's the left eye. Um, so for this one, I'm going to do a torus. Um, it's an eye, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to do push and pop. Um, I don't see it right now, so I could also just try to bring it forward instead of changing the view. So I know it's like somewhere inside of this um, circle or the cat's head. So I'll just bring it forward a bit on the Z. So the Z axis is coming towards us. And so if I increase it, it'll, it'll be in front of the cat. So if I do like Z is 50, um, you don't quite see it. What if I do Z is 100? There we go. So there's our Taurus. Okay, so that, I guess if I was doing like a astronaut cat, I'd probably be done, but let's make this into an eye. Um, and if I want to change the material here, actually, let's do that second. So I'll make the eyes and then I'll change the material. Um, so I obviously want to make it a bit smaller since it's an eye. So let's try 20. And then with the, with the torus, if I, if I want to change the inside, I can do that as kind of the second, um, uh, Parameter, that's the radius of the tube. So if I say like 10, I guess that's actually what it already was. If I say 20, so now the tube radius is the same as the circle radius. So it's kind of like this squished thing. Okay, that's kind of funny. You might like that. Or maybe we want to make this a little bit bigger. Or we want to make this a little bit smaller. Um, however you want to do it, that looks pretty funny. So I'm going to stick with that. And then I just want to move it uh, to the left. So for the left, that means X is negative. So let's translate maybe negative 50 on X. Okay. And then let's move it up a bit. Let's do negative 50 on Y. Uh, that's too far. Let's try, uh, 25. Okay. So that, that's not so bad. That's pretty good. Um, one thing is that the torus kind of sticks away from the the face a little bit. So I could rotate this slightly uh, on the X axis. I could rotate it back a little bit, but I don't really need to do that. Um, I'd still get mainly the same effect, but if I wanted to try that, I could say rotate X uh, and then I'm just gonna move it back a tiny bit. So I'm gonna say pi times negative, say 0 0.1, see if that looks right. Oh, that was actually the wrong direction. So let's just try point one. And that's pretty close. That's not so bad. Uh, if I do two, that's probably going to be too much. Yeah, now it's like sticking out the other side. So let's do point one. That's pretty good. I could also probably rotate it like this way a bit, but then I'm getting kind of anal there. So let's just see if I can get it. So this would be rotating on the y axis because that's the this one. So let's try rotate y pi times 0 0.1. We can just try it. If it doesn't work, you know, we can always get rid of it. So that was the wrong direction for that one. So I'll just try negative. So you kind of have to go back and forth a bit. And so that actually looks pretty good. And you get some kind of cool effects at certain points of the lighting. Um, so that's not bad. So let's add the other eye and then we'll be done. So with this one, I am just going to copy and paste because that was kind of hard to figure out. I'm not going to try to figure it out again. So I'm just going to paste the whole thing. This is the right eye. I'm just going to move the opposite direction on X, uh, same direction on Y. So we're going to move that way. And then for the rotation, it actually kind of looks funny if I leave it like that. I might leave it like that. Let's see what happens if I change this to negative and this to positive. Um, that didn't really work because we want to go the same direction on X and a different direction on Y. No, okay. We want to change, we want to go this way, which is Y. Okay, so I would just change Y. Okay, so that's what it looks like if they're going in opposite directions. But I actually kind of think it looks funnier like this. Let's leave it like that. Okay, so that's our cat's eyes. If I want to change the eyes color, I can do that. Um, so this is where I want to keep in mind using my materials. Um, I have like this, the specular material. Um, so I could copy this 
and I could uh, put it here. And so this way it'll apply to everything that comes after this. Um, I don't want to put it right next to the torus because if I have the push and pop, that will get rid of the specular material as well. Um, so let's look up another color for this one, HTML color codes, um, something that goes good with pink or this plum color, maybe like a yellow. Uh, we could try uh, maybe the light yellow. Looks kind of nice. 255, 255, 224. So let's try that. 255, 255, 224. Mm, it's not enough difference really there. Let's try another brighter color. Maybe we'll do gold. So gold is 255, 215, and zero. Okay, that's a much brighter difference. It's kind of they kind of look like donuts now, but you know they already kind of look like donuts. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. That's pretty good. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is add something for the mouth. Um, I'll just do some like kind of teeth because I do want to show um, something that we learned a few weeks ago, which is the for loop using a for loop with this. Um, so I'll start with one tooth and then just show how to make the for loop. So uh, let's go down here and say, this is the mouth. And I'm gonna use a box for a tooth. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this. So let's just say a box, let's say it's 10 wide and 20 high. Uh, and let's see how that looks. So we can't see it, so we gotta bring it forward a little bit. So let's do a push and a pop. And let's translate. So I'm going to translate 0, 0, and let's bring it also 100 forward on, on Z. OK, there's our tooth. All right, so let's move that down a bit on the Y. OK, that's pretty good. Um, but then I don't want to like make a million of these boxes, like copy and paste this thing a bunch of times. I probably want about like 8 or 10 teeth. So what I'm gonna do instead is use a for loop. So anytime I wanna repeat something, remember I gotta use a for loop. And I can use push and pop inside of my for loop. Um, so what I'm gonna do, let's say I want to start like kinda on one side of the face and move to the other. So I'm gonna do for, I'm gonna make an x variable. So I'm gonna start maybe at negative uh, 50, um, cause that's how much I did for the i. So I'll start at negative 50. Um, I'll go for X is less than 50. So I'll go, you know, 50 more pixels past zero. And then I'll increase. So my boxes are 10 pixels wide. So uh, maybe I'll make them a little bit smaller. I'll make them like eight pixels and I'll just do X plus equals 10. So that's how much space I'll have in between teeth. And then I'm gonna have my box here and I'm just gonna translate. So again, I'm doing a bunch of translations. I wanna do push, okay, and pop in between each one. So I can do this inside of my for loop. And now I'm gonna translate to X and just ignore the Y and Z because I did those up here. So I'm gonna add this translate to this translate. But since I'm going through the for loop, I'm gonna go through this however many times there are teeth and I'm gonna push and pop for each one. So let's see, there we go, that's <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, he's got a little bit of like a grill vibe going, which is kind of cool. Uh, we might change that color in a second. So let's bring the teeth back a bit on the Z so they're not sticking out too far. Okay, and that's a, that's a little too far. And the gaps are a little too small, so let's actually increase this to like 15. Okay, and then I'll make this 10 again. And that's probably not super even, but that's okay, whatever. Uh, so it looks a little strange, but you know, it's good enough. Let's change the teeth color, because uh, we don't wanna, it's a little too gold, basically, in this case. So let's change the color of the teeth. Um, we can add a new specular material. I'll just make them white, since they're they are teeth. Um, so I'll do 255, 255, 255. 
Okay, so that looks pretty good. The teeth get a little bit of color because we have the ambient light is a little blue and the directional light is a little pink. So that's why we do get some color with the teeth. They're not just completely white. But if we shine the directional light on them, we may need to move our directional light or sorry, our point light a bit forward. Where's our point light? Yeah, it's only on 50. Let's do 100 on Z. Okay, so now we can actually add that to the front. Okay, maybe even farther, 150. Okay, there we go. So now we can really light up our character. All right, not so bad for a quick composition. It took me about 20 minutes. So yeah, that's kind of, you know, how you would create a character. It's not going to look super realistic, but um, you can start to kind of play around with the different positions um, and make sure to also play with the lighting. So I don't want to see a bunch of scenes that have the exact same lighting. So play with the lighting as well, just so you can get different effects with the color, different moods. If you have dark lighting versus very bright lighting. Um, so try playing around with that as you're moving the shapes around as well. Um, so that's basically it for this demo. Uh, I'm going to go over to GitHub and just commit this. So I'll say adds 3D cat demo and commit to master and then push to origin. And so I'll include a link to that in the YouTube video. Um, and again, if you have any questions, or you need help with anything, just shoot me an email or chat me on Discord and we can do a Blackboard meeting or just communicate um, by message and you know I can try to help with anything that you're working on.